Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This is the complete series of a game of cat and mouse, all compiled together for you to have as a one video. So I hope you enjoy. Massive shout out to Kim for the use of her beautiful stunning artwork in the thumbnail. Check out all of her information listed down below. And make sure you smash that like button, comment down below what you think of it. And I hope you enjoy and make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on treats like this and other series and one shots. And I hope you enjoy. Part 1. Ladybug's Marinette's POV Milady, Careful! Cat darted towards her, catching her off balance as they both tumbled to the other side of the roof. He cupped his hands around her head and waist, protecting against the fall, even though she was in a supersuit. Sorry, but that Ayas was about to get you. His face hovered above hers as he landed on top of her. Quickly, his smile shifted to an embarrassed blush, checking her over as she was okay as he climbed off her. Ladybug gave him a soft smile at his rosy cheeks. He'd been trying to be more respectful of their boundaries recently, which she had been grateful for and noticed a softer side to Cat. She held her hand up, breaking the tension of their awkward position had produced. He clasped his hand around hers, swung her up and landed on her feet. Thanks, Cat. I didn't see. I was trying to figure out how we can get close enough without being spotted. I keep telling you, we need to be sneaky. Like, a. Uh... His whole face lit up as she watched an idea form in his mind. She didn't know if she was going to like this as he spoke the same idea that had been forming in her mind too. A mouse! We need Polly Mouse, he said in a proud, giddy tone like he'd just got an answer right for the teacher. The problem is, Polly Mouse is out of town. Oh. She could see him calculate around the issue. Oh, please don't say, please don't say, no, no, no. Then what about Moldy Mouse? I know for a fact she's in town. She she was great during Kwame Buster. Oh, crumbs. She felt her heart race in her chest as he gave her that fixed look in his eye that told her he wouldn't back out from the idea. But she isn't allowed it because we know her identity. That's why we have Polly Mouse now. I'm sorry to disagree with you, LB, but you're wrong. That reason doesn't hold up. The only people who know are you and me. No one else in the team. We know we can trust Marinette. She's amazing. Team player. It's smart. And the fact is, we need her to beat Hawkeye. If she transforms into lots of tiny mice. He paused for a moment and a shade of pink formed across his cheeks. Then she, she can get around the Sentimonster's nest and cast of Iasses. Ladybug had looked up the term on her yo-yo when they first came across the supervillain and the swarm of senti beasts emitted from the senti monster. Without being seen. She can capture the item and I can use my catalysm. It makes sense to me. Double crumbs. She didn't want to dismiss his reason because it was sound and made complete sense if Polly Mouse was around. But how does she explain Ladybug whilst Multi Mouse was here without Cat getting suspicious? I see what you mean, Cat. I do. But maybe, before he counter argued, she threw up a yo yo into the air. Lucky charm! After a burst of light, a small mouse landed in her hands. Too many crumbs to count? Cat burst out laughing. See? Even your little ladybugs agree with me. His grin was wide as a Cheshire cat. I know I don't normally do this, but can I go and give it to her? He said with an endearing tone to his voice and a sincere look across his face that created a warm sensation in her heart. Sorry, cat, but I need you to stay here and monitor the situation and distract if need be. Please, cat. Maybe if there's a next time. She pulled out a yo-yo and saw the smile vanish from his face as he gave her a small nod. Thanks, Cat. I won't be long. She swung out towards Marinette. 
her home, going at least halfway just in case he was watching before settling herself down behind a chimney. She opened a yo-yo and pulled out the mouse miraculous before transforming back. Spots off. A flash of red light gave way to Tiki floating in front of her. This is risky idea, Marinette. She handed a Kwame a macaroon to nibble on and then placed a mouse miraculous pendant around her neck. I know, Tiki, but it's like Kat said, to defeat this villain, I need to be multi-mouse. It would be different if Mylene was here, but she and Ivan are protesting at a rally. She gave me fair warning and now I don't have time to pick someone new for one fight. That's all it will be. I will nip in, do what I need to do, and then transform back. Count won't be the wiser. Hello, Mulo. The mouse Kwame had floated out of the miraculous and was glancing between her friend and the guardian. Hello, Marinette. The little mouse squeaked. Mulo, I need you to become multi-mouse for a short time, and Tiki, I need to take my earrings out. I can't risk Kat spotting you. I understand, Marinette. Tiki folded her paws, showing she clearly wasn't happy about the situation. It'll be about ten, ten, fifteen minutes tops, Marinette said as she took the first earring out, watching Tiki disappear inside of them while she removed the second, placing them carefully in her bag. Okay, Mulo, are you ready? The little mouse looked excited to jump into action. Mulo? Get squeaky. After a flash of pink light, Marinette transformed into a grey and pink suit with her ponytails turning into top buns. She had forgotten what it was like being multi-mouse. Last time she had teamed up with so many other miraculous charms that she hadn't felt the lightness of this Kwame as she bounced across the rooftops without the use of a jump rope. The joyous sensation of the spring in her step and the power within her speed. Normally, when she wears another miraculous, Tiki was attached, feeling a sensation of tug and pull as a unify. However, this felt nice. She landed back on the rooftop. Okay, now you are a marinette. Multimouse. Cat knows that. Hello. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Perfect amount of sneak. He gave her a little bow as he strode over towards her beaming a smile. Suddenly she could feel her face flush, blending in with the pink in her mask. This was Cat. Why was she blushing at his grin? He glanced around her, behind her. Where's Ladybug? Oh, she is... Her Kwame needed food and then she is... Multimiles pointed behind her. She told me the situation, what needs to happen. She let out a sigh as Cat nodded his head and accepted her excuse for now. So... She kept her gaze in front of her, edging closer to the side of the roof to spot Hawkeye. Being Marinette as a super felt a tad more exposed than just being Ladybug, and he kept giving her a soft smile. That didn't help either. Do you know where the villain is, or what the Akuma could be? She couldn't charge in as Ladybug and take over the situation since, well, technically, this was meant to be a second time being a super. There was a slight pause as he shuffled next to her, his eyes tracing at her sight. The kid's over in that direction. He pointed across the rooftop to the right. Kid? Her voice was a little high-pitched than she wanted it to be, almost like a squeak. A smirk drifted across his mouth. Yeah, Minnie. He doesn't look that tall as he flies about. Minnie? She repeated the same sound, causing a chuckle now to break through his lips, sensing he was trying to hold it back, but couldn't hide the lightness to his tone. It was strange to see the slightly altered version of Cat. He was more relaxed. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're cute. I mean, like, petite and a mouse. So, Minnie? He shrugged his shoulders, and she could almost see a tinge of pink forming on his cheeks. This was actually nice. Deciding to roll with it, Multimouse, now Minnie, chuckled in return, watching his stiffened shoulders relax just a little. You think I'm small now? Wait for this. 
She pulled her jump rope from around her waist and began skipping with it as she called out, Multitude! Forming a pink bubble to surround her. His eyes widened at the spectacle as she shrunk before him with her boots glowing white and lots of tiny multi mice ran out. He jumped from one foot to the other as if he feared stepping on them. He leaned down and cupped his hands together like she did to hold Tiki. Without hesitation, Marinette, no, multi mouth? Or was it Minnie? Stepped closer as the ten variations of herself danced around them, taking in their surroundings. Oh, wow! You are so... Hey there, Minnie, he said in a whisper as he lifted her closer to his face. So, what's the plan? You have that look on your face. I mean, you seem like you do. There was that blush returning to his cheeks. Was it because she was a tiny person in the palm of his hand she was receiving this reaction from Cat, or was it like he knew her? No, Marinette. No, you can't go there. Cat had saved Marinette a few times now. They had chatted on her balcony. That's why he knows Marinette. Nothing more. It can't be anything more. I was thinking... If you can get us close enough, then distract whilst we grab. Have you figured out what it could be hidden in yet? She nervously fiddled with her fingers as she gazed at his enormous green eyes that sparkled with wonder and awe. Well, I narrowed it down to two items Ikuma could be in. Both of them stand out. The first one is the crest hanging around his neck, and the second one is a tablet in his hand. He seems to be watching... What the Ayas is? Baby Hawks. Uh, capturing. Great work, Cat. Her excited voice came out as a squeak. This hadn't happened last time she had worn this miraculous, had it? He giggled. Thanks, Minnie. Do you want to get your team and climb on board? The next trip on the Cat Noir Express will leave in one minute. He gave her a little bow as he lowered her back down to summon her team. It was strange to see so many versions of herself, finishing sentences and agreeing to the plan before she concluded the idea in her own mind. Was she that predictable? With everyone in on what was to happen, they descended onto Cat, climbing up his arm and tail, causing him to wiggle and laugh. Careful, that tickles! The main mini, Marinette, perched at the top of his head, in between his ears so that he could hear her any commands. But as she sat amongst the extra soft strands of her hair, with the sweet soothing smell of almonds and sheer butter, she couldn't help wiggling on the spot and getting comfy. Are you all right up there, Minnie? He checked one last time, standing on the edge. Yeah. Her voice was gentle and relaxed. Okay. This wasn't good. She was going into battle. This wasn't the moment to create a nest in Kitty's hair, however tempted she was. She could hear a deep chuckle surge from his chest. Yep, I, um, we're good, Kitty. Okay, then. Departing in three, two, one. He leapt forward and the tiny mouse clung onto his suit and hair for dear life. It felt like she was on a roller coaster that she had no control over, as the wind swept through his hair and tickled her face and body, making her doing a wiggly dance to the sound of his sweet chuckles. I see him, Kitty! Cat nodded in agreement. Try and aim for the Oblice de Luxeur, and we'll jump off. Stay safe, Kitty. You too, Minnie. Ready? Go! Cat landed on all fours, clinging to the top point. Isn't it bad enough we already have one hawk? Now we have two? Cat called out, grabbing the attention of the boy, covered in an ombre of golden brown to white feathers, gliding through the air with vast wings that caused a gush of wind. But to a tiny mouse? Felt more like a storm as they struggled to grip onto the statue. On Multimouse's command, half of a team aimed for Hawkeye, landing on the wings whilst the other half leapt onto the cast of Iases, now taking chase after Cat. Her inner marinette admired how fearless he seemed, baiting their enemies into chase as he dodged from rooftop to ledge, spinning his baton as he went. But 
he was nearing position which meant she had to act fast. The five of them clambered through the feathers, two for the necklace, whilst three went for the tablet. Count was just the amount of distraction to give the team ten seconds head start before Hawkeye had realised what was happening. Enough time for the other half of the team to redirect the centipedes, catching their fall. Before she knew it, they had thrown the items to Cat's outstretched catalysm, destroying them into ash. However, there was no time for Multimouse or Minnie to bid farewell to Cat. This was the time Ladybug needed to return to cleanse and transform the disastrous city back into its former glory. She transformed back into one Multimouse and darted towards the nearest alleyway to only come out a minute later, zipping across the city as Ladybug. She landed near to Cat, captured the Akuma and the Amok before throwing her lucky charm into the air and gazed at the miraculous scene. She could never tire of that part. Cat ambled towards her, searching around the area and even picking up his feet as if he was scared he would step on something. Or someone. She's not here, Cat. Her timer ran out and she had to transform back. The gleeful look faded from his face. Pound it? She held her fist out, and for the first time, he didn't have the same triumphant look on his face. What's wrong, Cat? You did a great job out there. He grumbled something under his breath, and then gave the impression of sulking. Cat, what is it? Minnie should be here to celebrate. It doesn't seem right without her here, you know? Ladybug had to take a steady breath. She was used to him praising Ladybug to the point it was water off a duck's back, but Marinette? That she wasn't used to hearing and could almost feel a blush forming under her mask. Thankfully, he wasn't looking at her, more focusing on his feet and then his hands. A slight smile crept across his lips, as if remembering something. She was amazing, Ladybug. How she... we... Came up with a plan, and she was fearless, but also adorable at the same time. Cat? I mean, she transformed into ten tiny versions of herself. How could that not be seen as adorable from a professional viewpoint? The red in his cheeks got darker as he rubbed the back of his neck. I was thinking, just in case we need to use Minnie... Minnie? Yeah, this is a team nickname I came up for her, because she's like Minnie in life, you know, and a mouse, and then when she shrunk? Sorry, you were saying if we need her. She needed to change the subject from Cat's continuous compliment train that didn't seem it was going to stop. After all, why would Ladybug blush at him boasting over Multimouse? Oh! Yeah, if we need to use her again, we should, I could, take her out on patrol, get her comfortable with it. How cool would it be if we had a game of cat and mouse across the rooftops? He looked almost giddy at the idea. But we have poly mouse in the future. Do you really think that's necessary, cat? That's true, and yet we needed her today. She was the one who really won this battle. She knew Tiki wouldn't be happy about the idea, but Cat was also right. If she hadn't been multi-mouse, the plan wouldn't have worked, and what would be the harm of one patrol and be Minnie one last time? She glanced back at Cat, who held a plead in his eye. Maybe she could use the time to figure out why Cat wanted to spend extra time with Marinette, too. Or was he simply being nice to a member of the team? She let out a little sigh, pretending this was a favour in the hopes he wouldn't ask again. Okay, Cat. One patrol with Multimouse, just in case she is needed in the future. Really? Thanks, Ladybug. Can I also request... Can I be the one to tell her? So that I can arrange to meet with her? For... Patrol, of course. Yeah? Sure. What was this cat up to? Great! I'll go and tell her now. His ring gave a beep, saying he only had a few minutes left. After I fed Plague first. I'll send you a message afterwards with a day so she can get her miraculous unless... 
A message will be fine. You'd better go. So should she, in the hopes of beating Cat to a balcony. Thanks, Ladybug. He gave her a soft smile. That one she knew was only directed at Ladybug. I'll see you around. He gave her a quick wave as he lowered his baton in front of him and levered it himself to the nearest building. She felt a warm glow inside of her as she zipped out her yo-yo and raced back before seeing her kitty waiting for her. Curious in his behaviour and failed to admit to herself how much she was actually enjoying it. Part 2. Marinette's POV Ladybug did her usual zigzag across the city so that no one saw her directly head back home. She skillfully landed through the, her open window and transformed back to Marinette on her bed. Without saying a word, her Kwame Tiki flew off to her jar of cookies and seemed like she was in some sort of huff with her. Marinette sighed. She understood where her friend was coming from and would have a word with her later, after Kat had paid her a quick visit. She grabbed her oversized knitted sweater and shoved it on over her head before stepping out into the cool November day as the sun began to set already in the late afternoon. She watched the figure of Cat Noir jumping across the rooftops against the pink and purples in the sky. He landed gracefully in front of her, still wearing the wide grin on his face. A cheeky thought ran across her mind and decided to play along with whatever this tomcat had in mind. Good evening, kitty cat. What brings you here? Hello, Minnie. He gave her a sly wink before settling himself down beside her and lowered his voice. I wanted to say that you were amazing out there today. His tone had shifted, reflecting a more earnest feeling towards his words. I think some people think it's easy being a superhero, turning up and saving the day from Hawk Moth or is it Shadow Moth anyway, and his Akuma. Well, it's not. Sometimes it can be quite scary, but today I really enjoyed it. So thank you. He gazed down at her and there was a tenderness in his expression she had never seen on his face before, feeling herself blush. She looked away and took a steady breath. That's nice of you to say, Kitty. I enjoyed myself being multi-mouse, or should I say mini, for a few hours. Well, if you mean that, he spun round and faced her, his eyes sparkling with excitement. How do you fancy coming on patrol with me tomorrow after school? Shall we say around four? That way you can practice being multi-mouse without the added stress of being in battle first. Just the two of us. I mean, Ladybug won't be there. She fiddled with the threads on her cuffs and glanced back at him through her eyelashes. Again, the blush formed on his cheeks as he rubbed the back of his neck, a gesture she found adorable on someone else. No, Ladybug is probably busy, and I thought it would be fun. A game of cat and mouse, shall we say? I mean, it should be okay. I don't think I've made any plans. Can I ask, as a regular super, how do you find making excuses to leave all the time to go and fight? Do you feel bad lying to them? Yes. Sometimes it can feel awkward, and yes, there are some people I hate lying to. He had leaned in a little closer, and then, as if realising, pulled himself back and sighed. But... You have to keep your identity a secret for you and your loved ones to keep them safe. I get that. I can see how hard it is for you. She placed a hand on his shoulder for support, not thinking he would place his hand on top of hers, locking her touch in. Kitty, would you like to come in and have a hot chocolate? I'm sure there are some cookies about. He gave her a warm smile his fingers interweaving around hers a little as he glanced at the welcoming lit room. I won't come in. I mean, what would people say if you started letting in stray cats into your home? He let out a light-hearted laugh and wiggled his eyebrows at her, knowing her cheeks had turned a little pink. But if you're not too cold, Minnie, I would love one out here with you. She slid her hands out of his. I will be back in a moment, Kitty. Don't go anywhere? I won't. I poor promise. 
He held his hand up in the air, giving her another Cheshire cat grin. Marinette quickly dashed down the stairs and into her kitchen, warmed up some milk. She grabbed two of the hot chocolate sticks she had made to give out as early Christmas presents, placed a handful of marshmallows into a bowl and a can of whipped cream, placing them all onto a tray to take back up. It was kind of nice to be hanging out with her kitty without the pressure of being Ladybug. She poured the hot milk into the waiting large mugs and carried the tray back upstairs. Here, let me help. He jumped down and lifted the tray out of her hands through the skylight and placed it on the small coffee table. Wow, Minnie, you didn't have to go through so much trouble for me. The sun had finally set over the city and gave way to the night sky filled with the warm glow of the street lamps and the chill from a clear night. Of course I do. I mean, it's my way of saying thank you to for today. Being so welcoming. How do you take it? What's that? A hot chocolate stick. I made them. It's a blend of cocoa powder and real chocolate on a stick and you dunk them into the hot milk and watch it dissolve. That's so clever, Minnie. That's so you, he breathed the last words. I will take mine with extra marshmallows and cream, please. Got a bit of a sweet tooth, have we? She gave him a cheeky smile. He blushed again. Recently, I've developed one. He watched as she assembled the hot chocolate, taking care over every detail. Can I ask, Kitty? Yes. Cat replied while sneaking a marshmallow out the bowl. Why take me on patrol if you have potty mouths now? They caught each other's gaze. Hers was questioning whilst his was deflecting. Yes, sometimes we use potty mouths, but we couldn't today and needed you. Plus, I think it's important that all miraculous holders should keep up on training and patrol, not just Ladybug and myself. She handed him an oversized hot chocolate as his eyes widened taking it in. You do? Yeah, let me put it this way. In the nicest way, you are the understudy to Polymouth. But if the lead wasn't able to perform, you wouldn't put the understudy on the stage without them being part of the rehearsal process first, would you? Does that make sense? Cat took a large mouthful of the hot chocolate, but when he lowered the cup, he had a cream moustache across his top lip and a blob on his nose. Marinette couldn't help but double over, laughing at the sight. You have a little something there? She could barely get out. At the sight of Marinette holding her stomach in laughter, Cat's cheeks became red and his smile was wide. She tried to take a couple of deep breaths as she grabbed a handful of paper napkins, handing them over to Cat. Then she picked up her own mug, knowing what the results would be. Kitty's eyes shot open in surprise before erupting into a fit of giggles at his princess. I believe you have a little something on your face too, Minnie. He struggled to breathe, never mind talk. Who? Me? Marinette did a mock shock expression at the very thought, but lifting the mug up took another mouthful, making it worse. The comedy sketch went back and forth for the next five minutes until Cat held his hands up in the motion of a T. Time out! It hurts too much from laughing! The words struggling to exit his mouth as he clutched onto his sides. Both of them had tears streaming down their faces from laughing so much. Thank you, Minnie. I needed that. I know what you mean, Marinette said, still trying to wipe the cream from her face. Did I get it all? She moved her face from side to side. There, one bit left. Nope, still missed it. She let out a sigh. I'll give up. I'll get a mirror. Look, I'll get it. Before she protested, Cat had leant forward, his face in front of hers, to the point she could smell sugar and chocolate coming from him. He carefully wiped her cheek as his eyes caught hers. She could feel herself getting drawn to him his lips now hovering above hers. No, she couldn't. No, it can't happen. With all her strength, she pulled back. Thanks, Kitty. Did you manage to get it? Great, I I will give my face a wash in a minute. A few minutes ago, there had been laughter, and now there was an awkwardness between them. I had better go anyway, but thank you for everything. He gave her a soft smile. 
Do you want me to meet you here, or... How about I meet you over in Notre Dame? She pointed to the Grand Cathedral in front of her balcony. Don't want too many superheroes coming back and forth from here. Good thinking. Well, I will see you at four tomorrow. He gave her a half wave and pulled out his baton. Night, kitty. Cat Noir jumped back through his bathroom window and muttered, Close in. Oh, thank goodness, honey-crusted Brie, I'm home. Plaid called out as Adrian collapsed onto his bed, still riding the wave of his sugar high and spending a few hours with his princess. I still think you're playing with fire, kid. With this plan of yours? It'll be fine, Plague. We needed her today, and she was amazing. I wish you could have seen her, and I didn't think she could even get cuter until I had ten marinettes or minis. He chuckled to himself, climbing on top of me. I get that part with the battle, but asking Ladybug afterwards to take her on patrol? Don't you think your girlfriend is going to notice after a while that her boyfriend is Cat Noir if you spend more time together, jumping over rooftops? It'll be fine, Plague. I get to experience this other side of my life with her, just for a short while, and I got to see this whole different side of Marinette. She was born to be a superhero. She is a natural. I mean, the only issue is that I almost kissed her. Oh, how much I wanted to. But she stopped and pulled away. And now thinks Cat Noir has a crush on her. Well, he does, don't he? Adrian pulled out his phone and looked through a few pictures he would got of Multimiles and then at his pictures of Marinette. I just wish I could tell her, you know, Plague. I get it, kid. And one day you will. Once it's safe. Adrian let out a little sigh and opened up his messages to Marinette. Adrian, hey, missed you today. Sorry I had to cancel last minute. Can't wait to see you at school tomorrow. Heart. Marinette, I missed you too. And I understand. Something came up for me too at the last minute. Anyway, meet me on the steps before school. Heart. Adrian, can't wait. Sweet dreams. He hugged his phone to his chest as he relived certain aspects of one of his best days. He knew what Plague was saying was right, and it was only by chance that they needed Multimals today. But working with her like that as Cat Noir was a dream come true. Oh, how much he wanted to tell her that her kitty was also her Adrian, her boyfriend. He wanted to tell her how proud and amazed he was of her. He wanted to tell her for the first time in that perfect moment sitting on her balcony how much he loved her. With all his heart, there was no one like Marinette. Today he got to see every part of her. He only wished she knew every part of him too. Adrian got ready for bed, excited to see his princess in the morning. Whilst in the afternoon, he was looking forward to running across the city with his little Minnie Mouse. 3. Adrian Katz POV Adrian bounced out of bed, excited about the day ahead. He couldn't wait to see Marinette and be Adrian, her boyfriend who could wrap his arms around his princess Minnie. It had been harder than he thought being Cat around her and realised that Plague was right. Not that he would tell that bottomless cheese chasm. He would probably have to pay him in an overpriced order. If Marinette became suspicious of Cat, if he acted too much like Adrian, that was a strange thought. He'd always worried that he'd show too much of Cat in Adrian, and now he was worried about the opposite from happening. Either way, he would have to turn back on flirty Cat during his game of cat and mouse this afternoon. He glanced at his phone and realised his little daydream had cost him precious time and would now need to hurry if he wanted to steal a moment with Marinette before class. Longing to hold her in his arms and express how much she lit up his world. He quickly got changed and threw in extra cheese into his bag for this afternoon along with his books. Quickly, Plague, we need to go! 
His Kwame let out a little moan as he flew out his special cupboard, he liked to call it, and stopped in front of Adrian. What's the rush this morning? Are we eager to see Princess or Minnie? His little friend gave Adrian a smirk before flying into his pocket. She'll always be my princess, his voice drifted off. The car pulled up to the front steps of the school. He scanned the crowd gathering for a glimpse of the trio. He saw the red cap first, floating above the other heads, and made his way directly towards it. Nino came into view first, followed by Alia with her arm around the man whilst laughing at Marinette. There she was, his girl. He still couldn't believe he was this lucky to be loved and in love with this amazing woman. No, now she was a superwoman, he chuckled to himself. They had started dating fast, approaching four months now, ever since he had visited Marinette as Cat a year ago, drawn to her calming presence in the constant demanding responsibilities as Cat and Adrian. He had thought it was strange how she talked to Cat differently than Adrian, how much more relaxed she was with him, wearing a mask, getting to know this other side of his friend, and desired it as Adrian. Yes, he might have encouraged certain secrets out of her, and then encouraged her and helped to build up her confidence. But when she finally confessed one night that her secret love was with him... That changed everything. He was no longer this rejected cat to his lady, but rather a prince to his princess, who he had already been slowly falling for. Yeah, loving Marinette felt right. Hey, he said casually, whilst wrapping his arm around her waist and returning a smile back to her beaming face. Hey, you. She mirrored his action and felt that surge at her first touch of the day, holding back laughter at the thought of ten mini marinettes hanging onto his catsuit. Hey, bro, Nino added in. Morning, sunshine. You too. The sweetness makes my teeth hurt. Coming from you, and how much we've endured two years of you two? Sweetness? It's simply payback. Marinette smirked before leaning up on her tippy toes and gave Adrian a lingering kiss on his cheek. Oh, wow. He couldn't resist gently placing his hand up to her cheek as he felt her pull away, rotating his body and softly brushed his lips against hers, satisfying the hunger he had felt over the past 48 hours. But at that moment, she kissed him back confirming to him just how much he loved him, made his heart sing. Nino, help! I need a dentist now! Oh, the pain! Too much sugar! Alia declared dramatically, causing the couple to break away to the sound of Nino playing along with Alia through bursts of laughter. Alia, seriously! Then, girl, do it in private if you don't want to hear the audience's reaction. Alia raised her eyebrows before quickly giving Nino a peck on his cheek, causing him to blush at the sudden intimacy. Come on, you. Let's leave these two lovebirds to it. I need to grab a book before class. See you later, my dudes. Nino waved with his free hand and guided Alia through the front gates. Once they were semi-alone, people still bustling past them, greeting good morning, and Rosie's usual squeaky squeal at the sight of them finally being a couple. Adrian wrapped both arms around her and noticed a blush forming on her cheeks. How cute. So, what did you get up to yesterday? He couldn't resist the urge to tease and was rewarded with a deeper pink in her cheeks and the nervous glance down, unable to meet his eyes. Oh, you know, racing across the city, getting jobs done. How about you? She fumbled over a word, telling him a form of truth. Clever. Yeah, me too. But you were in my thoughts the entire time. Really? 
Her eyes darted upwards, locking onto his. Those ocean eyes. How much time he had lost drowning in them. Really? Are you able to get lunch with me today? You don't have any extra projects demanding your attention? There was a sudden look of conflict on her face before masking it with a smile. It was a look that came before a lie. I can do lunch, but I do have a new project, a commitment after school, just in case we had plans to study. He felt himself pulling the same look, hating this part, not being able to tell her the truth. No, we didn't have plans, and I'm in the same position. I've got last minute plans after school, but tomorrow I'm free for that study date or catch a movie. There is a new, don't you have fencing tomorrow after school? Oh, yeah. He had realised the other day he spent more time hanging out with his princess watching films or talking as Cat than he had done as Adrian. Cat was the one who could sneak out and knock on her window. Adrian had schedules and commitments he had to fulfil and be grateful for the stolen moments at school and the weekends if he didn't have a shoot on or additional studies. And yet, Cat wasn't allowed to do this. To feel her skin against his. To hold her so close her body became his. To kiss her when she had a silly whipped cream moustache. Adrian, are you okay? It's fine, you know. I understand. We can grab that film another time. The touch of her fingers running through the back tufts of his hair and along his neck brought him back to the present. We have all the time in the world. She lowered her voice and leaned in closer, breathing into his ear. I love you. In that instant, the dark clouds disappeared and the sun shone brightly, filling him up with a warm glow. How did a black cat get this lucky? She angled back ever so slightly, giving him a look that melted his heart and sealed over the cracks his life before her had created. Not caring about the audience they might have, he kissed her until he couldn't breathe. The sound of the school bell forced them apart with the widest grins on both their faces. It was his turn to need that dentist. Hand in hand, they quickly dashed to the lockers before racing into class, receiving a wink and a nudge from Nino as he took his seat. At lunchtime, they hung out in Marinette's room, fueled by snacks made by Mama Shang, and finished the homework he hadn't had time yesterday to complete, whilst Marinette sat next to him sketching out some new design. From the focus on her face, he knew it was important to her, and yet she brushed off the drawings, suggesting there were nothing more but doodles but swore he saw a hint of a paw print. Was she making something for Cat? He paused, realising for the first time she never told him, Adrian, about her hanging out with Cat. He had never noticed it before, placing his two versions of himself into different boxes, keeping them separate. But why shouldn't she tell him about Cat? I mean... Meeting a mass boy on a balcony to talk, hang out and watch films, bake cookies one time when she was trying to cheer him up. Putting it that way, if Adrian was another guy, he would be jealous of his girlfriend spending time like that together with someone else, even if they were just friends. A pang of guilt hit him. Putting Marinette in that position wondering what her thoughts were on the matter, and yet she didn't seem to mind yesterday as she made him hot chocolate. However, if he hadn't become friends with her as Cat, would he be sitting here now, finally knowing what true love felt like, or would he be still pining over Ladybug, recovering after another rejection? Adrian? She placed her hand on top of his, brushing her thumb across his knuckles. Are you okay today? You seem a tad lost in your thoughts. Did something happen yesterday? She whispered, running her hand up his arm and landing it in his hair as she stroked back the rough strands that hung across his forehead. He angled his head against her hand, 
forcing back the desire to purr. Everything is fine, Marinette. They are good thoughts, I promise you. He held her stare so that she would believe his words. Okay, if you say so. But you know, you can tell me or ask me anything. I'm here for you. I know. He leaned in a fraction closer. Marinette, there is something I want to tell you. He said in a serious tone, catching her off guard, giving him a nod to continue. Edging closer, he dropped his voice to barely a whisper. I love you with all my heart. She kissed the smirk on his lips and a hint of a chuckle emitting from his throat. After school, they bid their usual goodbyes with promises to call later. Adrian would head home, complete some of his usual tasks and then sneak out and meet up with Minnie. He was excited to see her superhero form again, a chance to run across the rooftops, but after his thoughts chasing back and forth all day, wondering if this was a good idea after all. If only she could know the truth. Realising how she might feel once she learned that a kitty was indeed her prince. Would she understand? Would she still love him? Both sides of him. As he transformed into Cat, making his way to Notre Dame to meet Minnie, he promised himself that he would act more professional, less flirty and be a true teammate for his multi mouth. And yet? As he landed down on the roof and saw Minnie was already waiting for him, looking super cute, he discovered how hard it would be to keep that promise. Hey, Minnie. Someone is enthusiastic for patrol today. He flashed her a broad smile. It would be strange if Cat wasn't a tiny bit flirty, right? Hey, kitty. She laughed, playing with her tail like she did with random pieces of thread when she was nervous. Yeah, I hope it's okay that I'm early. I mean, I haven't been waiting that long, but it's nice to take a moment and gaze at the city. How lucky we are to be able to see it from this angle. Cat stood next to her, clenching his hands over his baton so that he didn't wrap them around her, pulling her in against the chilly air. Instead, he followed her lead and took a deep breath, embracing a view that he'd taken for granted. You know, being cat for a while now, this has become normal for me, and I forget how lucky I am to have these moments. Thank you, Minnie. It's a funny concept, isn't it? That being a magical superhero is normal? Finding it hard to imagine life before Ladybug and Cat Noir appeared, saving the city from Shadow Moth and his evil butterflies. Don't forget yourself, Minnie, and all the other members of the team, keeping his stare on the horizon so not to get drawn in. Of course, but still, the idea of ancient magic existing? The Kwamis? When I think how old they are and what they've seen... And still Plague has the manners of a... Oh, I don't know. He's like nothing else. His obsession over cheese. And yet, he's my best buddy. I don't know what I would do without him. He chuckled at the look his buddy would pull at his words, commenting on how the gush would have infect his cheese. She placed a hand on his shoulder. That's really sweet to hear, Kitty. His eyes darted to her hand and then to her face, giving him that look that made him want to pour his heart out to his princess and confess his hidden thoughts, standing on her balcony. She gave him a quick pat and then removed it back to her tail. Shall we start the patrol? Focusing back on the task at hand. Thought we could follow the left bank first, making our way across the city before coming back here. Yep, sounds good to me. You're the leader. She gave him an encouraging smile. Oh, she was so sweet. No, focus. Teammate. Professional. He repeated three times, hoping the words would sink in. 
Great. I was thinking, if we really tested the abilities of Multi Mouse, so you felt comfortable using it. That's a good idea. And I bought extra snacks, so that should be fine. Kitty. She dropped her voice on his name, making him lean in. She tapped him on the shoulder. You're it! She declared her expression became mischievous as she jumped back, whipping off her tail and used it to fling herself across to another nearby roof before he realised what was happening. Part 4 Adrian Cat's POV Cat let out a deep chested chuckle at the sight of Minnie jumping across the rooftops. Hey! Wait up! Oh, I don't think so, she called behind her, her face lit up with excitement. This time, the mouse is going to escape the cat and win. But you don't know which way we normally go. Saying that, as he watched her, Multi Mouse was going the exact way he and Ladybug would normally take. The same roofs, the same angle to leap from. Had their patrol been documented? I hadn't been aware of it, or had LB told Minnie the route when giving her the miraculous? Yeah, it must be the former. At the end of the day, it didn't matter what route they took. He simply was having fun chasing after a mouse across Paris. Come on, slow coach. I thought cats were faster than that. Minnie paused for a second, waited until he got a little closer, and then jumped off, redirecting her route towards the Eiffel Tower. Slow? I'll show you how fast a cat can be. I was merely taking it easy on you. Sprinting off the roof, he leapt through the air and was now directly behind Minnie, resulting in her letting out a little squeak. <coughs> Too cute. No, focus. I'm going to win. On the last group of roofs, before the final leap to the tower, Minnie teased. I'm going to win! Through fits of laughter and taking one final glance behind her, she failed to fling her jump rope tail just so, as it missed clinging onto the bars. Kitty! It happened in an instant. Cat sprinted, placing his power into his legs as he took off. She tried to fling out the jump rope a second time, just as Cat flew through the air, grabbing her in his arms. I've got you, princess. With a bit of luck, he redirected them away from the building and landed on the ground. Are you okay? Are you hurt? He panicked, checking her over as he continued to cradle her in his arms. He didn't know what he would have done if something had happened to her, or because they were acting foolish. He had been foolish to encourage Marinette to play Tig across the city. Oh, how much he wanted to wrap her in his arms tightly around her, to be reassured at the sensation of her heart beating against his in an attempt to remove the loop of potential scenarios now playing in his mind. And yet, he couldn't. That would be strange for Cat to behave like that, as if he needed another reason to hate these secrets between them. <laughs> Only embarrassed, Kitty. She took his hand that was now checking her back, unsure what he was actually looking for. I'm fine, Kitty. You saved me. No harm done. But you could have been hurt. If I hadn't... His expression finished the sentence as he winced. She stared at him with her ocean eyes, questioning the level of concern he was now showing towards her. I guess I'm not as used to using the jump rope as I thought. She shifted in his arms as her face became red in humiliation. No, it was my fault. I was going to teach you how to use it, but instead we took off. As the leader, it was... He paused for a moment and gave a little nod. Oh, now I know how how B feels when I do something foolish. Huh. A crowd was gathering around them as she tried to raise and unpeel herself out of his hold. Wait, I have a better idea. Hang on to me. 
he said softly, whilst using his baton to carry them up into the air to the flashes of camera phones going off. Great. Now there'll be pictures of cat and mouse across the internet and newspapers. LB isn't going to be happy. Why would that affect LB? It's not like they are pictures of the two of you. She gripped harder onto his suit, and he had to stop himself from leaning his head against hers, before he levered the angle so they would land onto the middle platform of the tower. I know, but I had promised LB a simple patrol, not... He gestured to the crowd that was still lingering below them. Now there'll be questions of who you are, what had happened to Polymouth, and... He took a deep breath and caught her gaze. There was an adorable pink blush just underneath her mask that made him want to lean in and kiss her. No, this might be Marinette, but right now you are Cat, not Adrian. And it would be unfair to put your love in this position. With a forceful push of willpower, he released his arms from around her, lowering her onto the iron grid. Thanks, she said, twirling a stray piece of hair around her finger that had broken free during the chase. I will tell Ladybug it was my fault. Because it was. I wasn't paying attention and you saved me. I'm sure she'll understand. She glanced up at him through her lashes, a look that always seemed to melt his heart but quickly averted her sight away and back towards a crowd, which was now dispersing. Thanks, Minnie. That's really nice of you. Sure, no, no problem. Her voice sounded like a squeak again. Did it normally do that? And he hadn't noticed until she literally became a mouse? Or was it down to the miraculous, like his purring? Either way, he couldn't help but chuckle at the sound. So, I was thinking, what if you reduce down to one mini-mini? That way you could get used to that element and I'll carry you back to Notre Dame. Over already? Why, do you have places to be, Kitty? Well, he rubbed the back of his neck. I thought after. We'd take it slow. But I'm down for doing this again, if you are, Minnie. It was only meant to be a one-off, but... I could speak to Ladybug and see what she says. But, yeah, I would be down for doing it again. Apart from the near miss, shall we say. It's been fun. In that case... The Cat Noir Express will leave in five minutes. He wiggled his eyebrows at her, hoping to relieve some of the tension that was building between the two of them. Oh, why was this so much harder than he had imagined? She laughed, and he grinned. She removed her jump rope from around her waist and skipped. Multitude! This time, instead of lots of mini-minis, popping out from her glowing boots and scurrying around his feet. The one marinette shrank like Alice drinking the potion and became the most charming mouse he had ever seen. He placed his hand flat on the iron grid she was now balancing on and let her climb up. If he wasn't already in love with this girl, he guessed he would have fallen for this mini in that moment looking indescribably cute as she clung onto his thumb. Okay, hold it together, cat. Knowing the heat and colour were rising in his cheeks, he lowered his hand onto his shoulder and felt a scramble in his hair to the same spot on the top of his head. <laughs> you ready, Minnie? Cat Noir Express is about to take off, he said attempting to mask over the softness in his voice as she repeated the same wiggle. Minnie, are you making a nest up there? Maybe, she squeaked. Sorry, it's just so cosy and the smell. <laughs> That's all right, Minnie. Just hang on tight. With a light tug of his hair, he pulled out his baton and carefully guided his way through the city. 
They landed on the exact spot they had started from. The sun was dipping behind the building now as twilight created a hue of mystical colours across the sky and formed a low glow. He helped her climb back down and stared in wonder as Minnie became Marinette's eyes again. Thank you, Kitty. She awkwardly held out her hand for him to shake by. I had better go, but that was fun. Not seeing the lips sticking out from the guttering, she tripped and slid forward. Cat, without thinking, yanked her hand towards him and with his other arm wrapped it around her. Oh, that's embarrassing. I'm massively clumsy. She muffled into her hand, trying to hide her rosy red cheeks, and planted her forehead into his chest. I wonder if I'm suited to be a super sometimes. Oh, don't say that, Minnie. Marinette? He breathed her name into her ear. I think you are amazing. You were born to be a super, with or without a suit on. You display a courage and a kindness to your friends and family every single day. She leaned her face away from his chest and was staring at him with those ocean eyes with barely any distance between their faces. What more can a super be? I think you are more than a superhero than me. He lowered his gaze. After all, this was my chance to show LB I could take more of a lead, and then you fell. All because I didn't. She exchanged her cheek with his, placing her hand underneath his chin. No, Kitty, that was all my fault. I know for a fact that you were a brilliant partner for Ladybug. She thinks the world of you, and so do I. He didn't realise it was happening until it was too late. The cat was kissing his mouth. Kitty? Part 5. Marinette Minnie's POV. Kitty! She jumped back from him. I, I can't! Why? You know, I'm Adrian. Sorry, my fault. I didn't mean to. She fumbled on the spot, avoiding the look on his face of confusion and yet longing. But most of all, she was trying to forget how good that kiss had been. Like she had done it before. It had felt right. No, no, it was wrong. All wrong. Adrian. He was the one you loved, had waited all this time for, and now she might have messed it up. I had better go. She pulled out a jump rope, making sure of her footing, and kept her focus on point this time. No! Wait! Minnie! Let me explain! Please! He tried grabbing out to her, but she refused, instead took off as twilight descended around them. She was about to transform back anyhow, and needed to be back in her room. Especially now, the public might be on the lookout for this new super, and the gossip attached to Cat. Oh, crumbs. What was she going to do? How was she going to explain to Adrian? How? How can she tell him she kissed Kitty? She had betrayed him. His trust. She hadn't even told him how much time she'd been spending with Cat. Why had she put herself in that position? Why had she felt drawn to him? She had Adrian. There was no way she was attracted to Kitty. I mean, yes, he was handsome, and he had been super sweet with her recently, but they were friends. That's all they were, and now friendship could destroy her relationship with Adrian, the one person she had desired all this time. 
Could she tell him? Can she tell him? What would she say? She had stopped it. Pulled back as soon as it happened. Would that make a difference? Could he forgive her? She paced across her room, glancing down at her phone, her fingers hovering over Adrian's smiling face and his number. She knew there was no choice. She had to tell him. She couldn't lie about this. But was she allowed to tell him she had been multi-mouse at the time? Or does she tell yet another lie and say that she had been Marinette? The guilt was tearing her up inside as images of Adrian's broken heart expression seared in her mind, colliding with the same one of Kitty when she had left him on the roof, calling out to her. Had that been why he had taken a shine to Minnie? Cat had feelings for her, not Ladybug. When, when had that happened? And yet, he knew about Adrian, right? So, what, he was willing to steal someone else's girl? That didn't seem like Cat. Then again, since placing on the mouse miraculous, none of this had seemed right. She knew now she should have listened to Tiki, and yet she needed it for the fight. But it was all of this afterwards, wanting to please her cat, wanting to please herself and have fun. Now what? The cost had become too high of a price. And yet... Oh, crumbs. Her thoughts were rambling together and making no sense. Tiki, help! She collapsed on her bed, burying her face into a pillow which still had a lingering smell from Adrian. That smell, bringing forth an image of Cat's hair and how she had curled up in his super softness. No, that was the mouse talking, not Marinette. Yes, Marinette? Tiki floated in front of her, with arms crossed and displeasure on her face. That was until she saw Marinette's panicked expression. What's wrong? What happened? I've messed up big time. I don't know how it happened. I mean, I do, but how could I let it? What on earth is he going to say? What am I going to say? Can I tell him semi-truth? Would he confront Cat? Marinette, what happened? kissed Cat. Well, no, he kissed me, and I pushed back, but not straight away. For a brief moment, it had felt right, but it's so wrong. I'm in love with Adrian. Dumb cat, Tiki grumbled. Tiki, you never say anything like that. What is it? What do you think I should do? I thought something like this would happen. You've blurred too many lines. I know I have. But I have to tell him, right? Do I say I was mini? I mean, multi mouse at the time? Reveal that or lie and say I was Marinette? Spending my free time with Cat Noir instead of my actual boyfriend. You're the guardian. The reveal is up to you. But once you've crossed that line, then it opens up for anyone to reveal. Even Cat. Would you let him reveal himself to Marinette? No. Of course not. Why would that make a difference to telling Adrian? It's not like I'm going to choose between them. There is only one option. You said it, Tiki mumbled. So you think I should tell Adrian? Marinette held out her phone in front of her, staring at the cute, candid photo she had taken of Adrian a week ago. She suddenly felt sick her stomach churning. Oh, what has she done? 
I think you two need to talk, yes. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Her fingers pressed down on his number, and she could hear the ringing tone followed by the click of him answering. Her stomach flipped. Hey, Marinette, I was... Can you come over? Or I come to you? Yeah. What's wrong? Are you okay? It's fine. I just really need to speak to you face to face. I'll come to you. Be there in five minutes? Good. Thank you. I love you. I love you so much. Her voice cracked as she hung up the phone. Tears fell down her cheeks, but she angrily wiped them away. No, this was my fault. I don't get to cry if it was my fault. I brought this on myself. His last words echoed inside of her head. He loves her. And she kissed another. She picked up the pillow that had the lingering smell of Adrian and screamed into it. She took a deep breath, trying to calm herself before he arrived as a thought popped into her head. How did it smell like him? It had been over a week since they had curled up and watched that film together, and since then, Cat had used it. Why did it? And then another thought pushed the last one to the side. Did she need to tell him all about our hanging out with Cat? They had only been friendly, not dates. But friends don't kiss. A text message sounded through from Adrian, saying he was at the side door of the bakery. This was it. She sent a quick message back and made her way downstairs. She opened the door to Adrian looking anxious. How much she wanted to throw her arms around him, but no, that wasn't fair. Right? Hey, come in. She stepped aside and allowed him to pass, filling her senses with that familiar scent. Marinette. His gaze was cast low, fixed on his held-out hand for her. Feeling his fingers wrapped around her somehow brought comfort, but also the sensation of dread in her stomach, that this might be the last time he held her hand like this. We'll talk in my room, she said firmly, not sure if her parents on the other side of the bakery door could hear them. He nodded and allowed her to lead the way, keeping a firm grip on her hand. She lowered the trap door down quietly and stood up to Adrian flinging his arms around her, squeezing her tight. Adrian, please don't break up with me. His voice sounded scared. His fingertips dug into her back, pressing his head against hers. That smell, the soft touch of his hair tickling against her cheek. He ran a hand from her back towards her neck and into her hair, leaning back enough to hover his lips in front of hers. Oh, how much she wanted to close the gap and wish with all her heart she didn't need to say those words. Adrian, no, I, I would never, but... Oh, thank goodness. He went to lean in, but she stopped him. But... We still need to talk. She pushed herself out of his hold, needed air to breathe. What do you need to talk about? He seemed hesitant, fearful of what she could say, causing the bubbling dread to form into a monster. I... Oh, I... Don't know how to say this. Whatever you need to say won't change how I feel about you. He tried reaching out to her, but she pulled away. She was not worthy of his touch. Taking a deep breath. <sighs> Cat Noir kissed me, she blurted out. Did, did you kiss him back? Is that what you wanted to tell me? 
You chose him over me? No, I didn't. I pushed him away. Well, I hesitated for a moment and then I pushed him away. But I love you. I chose you. It had got to the point the monster of dread was growing inside of her as she watched his expression of remorse spread across his face. I completely understand if you don't forgive me. I don't forgive myself and I wish I could tell you how or why it might have happened. But I can't, Adrian. And I'm so sorry. She collapsed onto the chase with her head in her hands and her tears dripping through the gaps between her fingers. Marinette, he said softly, kneeling down in front of her, placing his hands on top of hers. There's nothing to forgive. Knowing you, loving you, I believe you. He wrapped his arms around her bent over body, cocooning her inside his hold. It is my turn to confess. I think there is something I need to tell you, he whispered. There it was, stronger than ever, the smell of almonds and sheer butter, the softness of his blonde hair, the green eyes which could show her the depths of the universe. The sweetness of the kiss which he had known so well. Was it possible? Him? Marinette, I... Cat Noir. In shock, he released his hold and allowed her to sit up. Cupping his jaw in her hands, she searched his eyes as she was staring from a beast into a prince. It's you, isn't it? It's really you. My kitty. Part 6. Marinette. Minnie's POV. Cat Noir. He released his hold, giving her space to sit up. Cupping his now open jaw in her hands, she searched his eyes as she was staring from a beast into a prince. It's you, isn't it? It's really you. My kitty? How had she not realised before with those green eyes she had lost hours in? Never mind his smell. How had she not seen it earlier? She should have known. Adrian, tell me. He peeled back her hands off his face, casting his eyes down and clasping them between his. No, Marinette, how could I be? Why would you think that? She angled her head to the side, trying to grab his gaze, raising an eyebrow at him with a challenging look. Adrian, it makes sense, especially after the last couple of days. Do I really need to spell it out? Fine. At first it was the smell of your hair, but now I see it in your eyes. And the kiss? It would explain. He let out a long, slow breath, as if he could finally breathe again darting his eyes up at her like a child with a hand caught in the cookie jar, riddled with guilt. Oh, I wanted to tell you, Marinette, my princess, my mini mouse, I hated not telling you, lying to you. She had guessed, but hearing it confirmed startled her a little. In front of her was her kitty. But as Adrian, they were really the same person. I can't believe it. I figured this out, that you, Adrian, 
is my kitty. Are you disappointed? It's me. Is that it? He released one of his hands around hers and brushed back the hair from her face, helping her to see him even more clearly as she heard a hint of pain in his voice. No! No, of course not. Why would I be disappointed to learn that the boy I love is also my superhero kitty? Who... Wait. She held her hand up, pausing him, his hand dropping from her face. One by one, the puzzle pieces finally fell into place. That was you? All those times you came round, we hung out, we talked, watched, wait, we talked. I told you things before... She gestured back and forth between them. I told Cat secrets about you. A hand shot to her face, covering her eyes and her cheeks. No, 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 no. This is embarrassing. Why should it be, my love? She could hear he was trying to hold back the laughter, but failing badly. You knew. You, you knew I liked you before. Wait. Oh my goodness, this is too much. As cat, you encouraged me to speak well to you. Why didn't you ask me out straight away if you liked me? She gave him a wide-eyed stare. You weren't ready yet, my princess. He grinned at her, using the nickname without the mask. You are the most amazing person I have ever met, and I don't think you realise the extent of my love for you, but your confidence in yourself, the love for you, is low. So it might have been wrong, but I felt you needed to celebrate you. Build up your confidence that we could hold a conversation, but oh. He leaned in closer. The more time I spent with you, getting to know you, the more I fell deeper in love with you. That, that's when Adrian, you, she chuckled, asked me out. But since then, you kept coming around and hanging out? Yeah, I did. He rubbed the back of his neck and scrunched up his face, a mannerism which he found adorable. It was the only way I could spend that extra time with you. But it meant I couldn't be with you like Adrian. Hold you, kiss you. So, me being mini, how you acted, it makes sense now. The fall... The kiss when Cat kissed me was you. Oh, she huffed. The guilt I felt over that. I thought I would lose Adrian. You over that kiss? I can't believe how you... She couldn't help but feeling angry at his actions. That is why kissing Kitty felt like kissing you. I thought for a moment. I'm so sorry I put you through that. Being cat and mouse at the start seemed like a great idea. But you as Minnie? My cup filled over. And I found it hard to hold back my feelings as cat. And I didn't realise it was happening until it was. I mean, it's not an excuse. And I'm sorry I put you through that confusion and pain. Oh. How I wanted to tell you so much, but but you couldn't because of the rules and the whole secret identity. It was her turn to feel guilty. He wasn't the only one holding secrets. How would he react to hers? She cast her sight onto their entwined fingers, rubbing her thumb over his. Do you forgive me, Marinette? My love, please say that you do. Can you see that I never meant to hurt you or betray? Of course, Adrian, in a heartbeat. I love you. 
It was as if he could no longer hold back. In one move, his lips pressed against hers as his free hand ran from her jaw, across her ears and through her hair. A hint of salt blended in between the lips, not sure if it was from her tears or his. I love you, Marinette. More than you'll ever know, he breathed onto her lips. I'm pleased you worked it out, so now we don't have any more secrets between us. He added another lighter, playful kiss to her lips as her stomach churned at his words. Ladybug was all she could get out. He pulled back and dropped his head slightly at the reality of the situation. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to tell Ladybug. If she will be mad at me, take away my miraculous. I really don't want to give up Plague or being Cat Noir, except for you. I'll do anything for you, including... Don't even think about it, kid. That ain't happening. The black Kwame zoomed out of Adrian's pocket and floated in front of him. Plague? Marinette. Meet my Kwame, or as I like to call him, a cheese gremlin, who lacks manners. Adrian paused, the smile fading from his face. Bunny, I can't help it. If when Lady Bug finds out that I reveal my identity, when I tell her Marinette knows, I don't know what she'll do or say. Plague hovered out in front, but wasn't looking at Adrian. Instead, he folded his arms and glared at Marinette. I doubt it she would do that. Would she, Marinette? Buddy, I hope not. I hope Ladybug can see the situation we're in. A puzzled expression formed across Adrian's face as he looked from his Kwame to Marinette. Plague, be nice. Why are you... He gestured at his Kwame to explain. This is Marinette's home and we are her guests. Why are you acting like this? She ain't gonna take your miraculous kid. You are the best cat noir I've had and she wouldn't. Plag continued to stare down Marinette. Thanks, buddy. That means a lot and I hope that is the case, but how can you know? She might? Why do you keep staring? What am I missing? Are you going to tell him now? I'm sick of all these secrets. Going back and forth. Knowing. Hearing about it. Just tell him already and be done with it. Plague? Marinette, do you know? Said Adrian. She slid her hand out of his, rose to her feet. What choice did she have now? She couldn't lie to him. She darted her eyes around the room and glimpsed Tiki emerging from her nook she had created beside her bed and looked rather angry. More than she'd ever seen before on her Kwame. Marinette tried to dash forward. Wait! She called out, but it was too late. Plague? How dare you? What right do you have to challenge the Guardian like that? Sugar cube? Plague smirked. Tiki! The sound of Marinette's voice caused her now glowing red Kwame to stop in front of Plague. Tiki? Plague? Sugar Cube? Guardian? Marinette? Ladybug? Adrian listed off, his voice becoming higher in pitch at each word, jumping his wide-eyed stare from one to the other until finally landing on Marinette, searching her face. Well, that's one way, said Plague, laughing. Oh, you stinky sock! <sighs> Tiki let out a low growl of frustration. Adrian? Well, I'm... She squinted her eyes shut, unable to hold his look of confusion, fearing she could see disappointment in there. Ladybug? All this time? Ladybug? Whilst I'm Cat Noir, Marinette, my Marinette, my love, well, you have been Ladybug?
She peered through her fingers that were now covering her face and watched Adrian holding out his hands in front of him, one going higher as the other went lower, as if weighing up the information. Oh, what should she do? Was he disappointed? Or reliving all those moments Ladybug had? Rejected cat. Adrian, I'm sorry. I was, but couldn't. You, do you, take back? She folded back her fingers, shutting her eyes. I'm sorry. Her voice became muffled by her palm covering her lips. No, don't be. She could feel him attempting to peel her hand away. She squinted one eye open and saw a soft smile form across his lips. I mean, it's a shock. Finding out? Yeah, it's a lot to take. She rolled her lips between her teeth and pulled an expression that made him chuckle. But I'm happy. I really am. He peeled back her other hand. That you are my bugaboo? My princess? My mini? But mostly, my love. My marinette. The rest are fragments of time. Cherished memories when we are old and cold up together, reliving the past. Marinette is my home. You are my everything. You mean it? She flung her arms around him and let out a happy sigh of relief. Oh, you are amazing, Adrian. She kissed him on the cheek and then on the forehead, causing a ripple of laughter to come out of him, and then back down on the other cheek. I love all of you. Your heart, your soul, your kitty side. It's all you. And I can't wait to grow old with you, Adrian. She kissed his smile as he held her tighter against his body. And to think, this all came out? Because I wanted to play a game of cat and mouse across the rooftops of Paris with my girl. I still won though. She leaned back and arched an eyebrow, knowing the playful smirk she was displaying. Oh, is that so? I demand a rematch. Best out of three? He released some of his grip on her and gave her his best flirty cat to look she could never resist, especially now. Mulo? Flag? Thank you for listening to part six of, and the last part of the game of cat and mouse. I hope you enjoyed it. Got the wrath of Tiki voice. Um, make sure you smash that like button if you liked it. Sub comment down below what you thought of it and subscribe if you haven't already because you've got to part six what you're missing out on and there's so much other contents to enjoy. So I will speak to you soon and I hope you're good. Bye.